What's up people and uh, welcome to my tutorial series about anomaly detection. In uh, this tutorial we'll learn some sampling concepts. We'll be sampling from a static data set and we will also be looking into a little bit more advanced but really not that advanced topics where you want to sample from uh, unbounded data basically from a data stream and um, this will in the tutorial series we'll see how we create a sample from this that we later use in um, in order to do anomaly detection and for anomaly detection i will be using an algorithm called um, isolation forest and i will put all of these descriptions um, in in the description field and uh, below the video so you can have a look at this GitHub repository that I'll be using and, and have a look at the readme here because it's going to have all the instructions that you're going to need to follow along. And uh, we're going to start out with, with the more simple concept. We're going to look at sampling from a CSV file. And I've been using a, um, a CSV file from Kaggle. The, the link in the, is here in the description. And, and the data set is also checked into the repository in the data set folder over here. So um, it's a data set that is um, with breast cancer and it's also labeled the data whether they have an, like an anomaly or not. So that's great news for evaluation because then we can calculate the accuracy of our algorithm for the isolation forest. Um, and then now after that, I will be using another data set where I sample from uh, system processes from my computer. So it's gonna be continuously putting in like the, the processes with their memory consumption and stuff. And then I will use that as a data stream to uh, also do uh, looking for um, processes that is, um, is uh, having a, like anomaly of, of any sorts with the same algorithm. And um, yeah, so the agenda first, we will have a look at the sampling here because we will need that to, to, do, the, to do the thing. And after that, we'll move on to the anomaly detection. And then we will have a look at uh, evaluation of, um, of the algorithm. So uh, this entire video will be based on this paper here. Um, this is my reference paper. And uh, that's a great paper. Like it contains the actual algorithm for, for implementing the thing. And it's not uh, a particularly complicated paper. And um, if you're somewhat accustomed to reading papers, you're not going to have any issues with it whatsoever. But like, if you're not feeling that you have that kind of academic background, it might be a little heavy for you. But uh, that's also the reason for why we have this video to begin with. So, um, if you want to, if you want to learn this, um, I suggest that um, uh, first you watch the series and try to follow along with the implementation that I have here. And then I suggest that you at least uh, try and read the paper from the references here. You can you can look it up the paper and see if you can find it. And um, after that, I suggest you dig around and play around with the, the implementation and and create some other type of data set that you use for your algorithm to to, to play around with it. And if you do that, you're gonna have a fairly good understanding of of how you can use this and be a little bit more creative with it. I have outlined the samplers here. There is one called CSV sampler that I'm going to use in the beginning. And then I'm going to use a stream sampler. Now, both of these outputs uh, the sample data set as a JSON file to the samples uh, folder right here. So what you can do is create your own little implementation of a sampler with the same kind of approach, put it in the sample folder with the same data structure, and you should be able to use the algorithm from there. You might have to change like hard coded file names and, and uh, stuff like this, but we will look at that once we, we dig into the code. So probably you need to change some, some file names and um, probably also some attributes that uh, is not going to be the same in your implementation if you play around with it. But I also have this like helper function here that's going to contain some helper function like uh, saving to disk, loading from disk, um yeah i think that's it yeah generating random numbers it's also one of these things that uh, i put put in this helper function um because for the purpose of this video pseudo random numbers will be perfectly fine so but if you have some other kind of application that might not be fine i guess 
Okay, cool. Uh, so that's the the first video in this tutorial, just outlining the what the tutorial here is going to be about. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, of course, that's important. And um, and also feel free to comment in the comment section if you have any questions, and uh, and I'll try to answer them as uh, as soon as I see them. Cool. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.